Welcome to the Word of God. Thank you very much for listening to this teaching. I am Pastor Da Love you and believe that you will be blessed by this message. And I would like to remind you one thing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. God wants you to be strong. He wants you to be mature, be blessed and fruitful. I believe that the Word of God that will be preached today will build you up, will reveal to you the plans of God for your life, and will also strengthen your soul, your mind, and feed your spirit. I pray that all of you will be stronger and stronger and become more mature in Christ Jesus. And God will use you in this generation. Listen to the Word of God carefully. Pay attention to what God wants to say to you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, that you gave us the best. That is your Son, Jesus Christ. You are such a generous God. You have gave us the sunshine, the rain, multi- multiple kinds of fruit and fish and all kinds of food. Thank you, Lord, you give us good friends in the church, give us good church to be a part of. You give us the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names. You give us the angels who take care of us, come around us and camp around us. You give us the Bible where we can read and know you more. You give us the Holy Spirit who is our helper. Oh, Lord, we thank you for everything that you have given us, Lord. You a such a generous God. So what we gave to you today compared to what you gave us is such a little thing, Lord. But we believe, Lord, as we sow the seed today, it will multiply. And this seed will be a blessing to many nations around the world that the gospel will be preached. Many souls will be saved. Many people will be delivered and healed and will experience the goodness of God. In the land of the living. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's give hand to the worship team. Wonderful, very anointed worship team. Do you know that our worship team members are all volunteer? They spend time during the week to come to practice music and Sunday morning come early to practice again. Uh, we are the volunteer-based church. Most people, we have about 80% of members serve God in this church without uh, any financial gain. So it's wonderful to have a, a, a lot of volunteers in the church. Everyone serve God very uh, faithfully, and I believe they will have a lot of rewards in heaven. Today, I would like to continue to talk about um, spiritual eyes. I touched the issue about the spiritual eyes when we have a snow Sunday. And I think I should try to finish the whole teaching about spiritual eyes. We already finished the teaching on the series called The Love of God. I would like to in- encourage you to get the whole series, to listen again. We started in the camp in August, and we just finished about two or three weeks ago. And the coming camp, we're going to learn about great grace. We're going to learn about how to have more grace, more favor of God in our life. So starting in August in the camp, we're going to teach about great grace. I'm writing the sermon right now. Now, I think it's number seven. I'm going to teach about the grace of God. A lot of people misunderstand. There is a, a, a teaching in the body of Christ that say that, oh, you have grace. You have a free ticket to go to heaven. Therefore, you can live Sinful life is okay. God forgive you. No matter what you live, you can live like a wicked man. God still forgive you and you still go to heaven. That is a false teaching about grace. Actually, grace is not a free, free ticket to go to heaven. You can do whatever you want. We're going to study in the Bible in detail about the grace of God in the series of teaching. So now I would like to talk about spiritual eyes. And let us pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your scriptures. And we, Lord, are hungry people. We want to learn. We want to know 
your commandments, your precept, and your truth, because your truth shall set us free. And Lord, your word is our spiritual food. When we partake this food, we will grow and we will be strong, and we can be used by you, Lord. We know, Father, we have so m- limited time on this earth. We don't live in this earth forever. One day we will live and we'll be with you for eternity in paradise. But we want to make this life count. We want to know and grow very fast. We want to be effective and fruitful in this life. Therefore, today, may your Holy Spirit, the anointing, the unction of God, be the teacher. That you can speak to your people in this room and those who listen to this teaching through the internet more than what even I say today, Lord, because you are the teacher. And I pray, Lord, that those who are t- listening to this teaching will be healed, will be set free, will be refreshed, will be renewed, will be encouraged, will be delivered. Lord, miracles will happen through this voice. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Last time, two weeks ago, on the snow Sunday, we learned that we don't only deal with the physical world, but there is a spiritual world out there that all of us may not be able to see. In fact, like the testimony that you heard about the brother and sister from Indonesia, I came from Thailand. Since I become teen, like a small kid. I saw all kind of spiritual thing in Thailand, demons, manifestation, miracles of the hand of demon, and all this thing happened everywhere. People play v i c h i board. People can call spirit in and talk, and all kind of things, and they prophesy. The evil spirit can prophesy. So you can see all these things. The spiritual world is real for an Asian man like me. Spiritual world is so real since I was five and six years old. Nothing new to me. Therefore, as Christians in the Western world, we need to understand as well that the uh, spiritual world. There is a spiritual world out there. Demons are real. Evil spirit are real. Angels are real. Heaven and hell is real. The Bible talk about the unseen thing, like in the book of. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 3. By faith, this is why we need to come to God by faith because we don't see. We understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen, what is seen in the natural, in the physical, was not made out of what was visible. The world, the things in the world, the creation was made by what we cannot see. That is God who is in heaven. Many things that happen in life are affected by what we don't see. You may see people symptoms. You may see something bad happen in a family. Maybe your kid just cry all the time, just wake up and cry all the time because maybe because the dad was watching pornography, and invite demon to come into the house by watching bad movie and pornography in the internet. So open the door for demon to come in that you don't see with your. Natural eyes, and then those demons torture your kids, and then break up your family, because you invite evil spirit to come into your house. That's why it's so important that as Christians who know God, who is spiritual, who is the Spirit, and we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, should have a sharp and clear spiritual eyes. You may not see things like in the natural with your. Natural eyes, but you can discern and you can see things in the spiritual realm. What is going on behind the scene that you don't see with your natural eyes? And I even use this principle in my neurosurgery practice at the hospital. When I talk to my patients, I just don't talk like this as a doctor. I use my spiritual eyes to see beyond what's going on. How can I help that patient? What's going on with that patient? You see, we need to be the kind of people that we call spiritual Christians, not carnal Christians. Last time we learned that as Christians, we don't just look at the natural thing with our natural eyes, but we should develop spiritual eyes to understand 
the things behind the scene, the spiritual things behind the scene. We learned last time that don't look at human with just your natural eyes. You remember when God told the, the children of Israel that don't look at the outward appearance of that man. Sometimes you may see people come in with a dress that look pretty terrible, but don't look at just the cloth. You need to look beyond the cloth and see inside the heart of the person. Amen. 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 So I heard the story about a church was hiring a new pastor. A new pastor is going to show up soon. This is a true story in certain city in America. And a man walk in, look like a street person. And he walk inside the meeting and sit in the front. The archer come and say, Hey man, you cannot sit here. This is for the pastor. And he look like a street person. He have a bad cloth and you know, the, the air hair was not in good shape. And the archer tried to chase him out of the building because he, they thought that this is a street man walking without respecting the place. And later on, he said, that, I'm a new pastor of this church. So the archer was shocked. He just wanted to test the spirit of this church because are you really welcoming people from the street? Are you, are you just looking at the outward appearance or do you look at people deep in the spirit? So we need to have the spiritual eyes. Last time we learned that when we use our natural eyes to look at the wrong things all the time, you can open the door spiritually for the wrong things to come in. Like we learned the story about um, uh, Eve that keep looking at the fruit. And eventually, she got into trouble. She picked the fruit and listened to the devil and sin entered the world because she kept looking at the things that she should not look at. Men in this room, if you are married, don't keep looking at other women. It's not healthy because you don't keep looking at your secretary. When she walk in, you are married, you have a wife, don't use your eyes to look at other women and keep looking at her because you can get into trouble. Don't entertain any bad picture in the internet because if you look at the wrong book, look at the wrong picture, you, if you keep looking it, at them, you are opening the door for the forces of the spiritual realm to enter into your life, enter into your family. Eventually, it will spread into your finances, your health, your wife, your kids. Everyone going to be affected. As a man of God, as a husband of, and the dad of my household, I have the responsibility to protect my family, to protect my kids and my wife, not open the door for anything to come into my house at all. And the same thing as a pastor of this church, I do the best I can to repent every day, living a holy life, and uh, uh, be careful, guard my eyes, guard my ears, guard my heart, not to allow any things to come into this church because I need to protect the members of this church who are my spiritual children. You see, it's so important that you need to understand the things of the Spirit that you don't see with your own eyes. Not only that, we learn that if we are not connected to God, we are not thankful to God. I'm reviewing from last time. If we are, don't walk by faith, our spiritual eyes can be blurred, can be um, not, will, will not be clear because our heart is not right with God. That's why we need to repent every day, walk in faith every day, be thankful to God every day so that our spiritual eyes can be clear and we can discern and will not make mistake. Amen? If you notice, the Bible say one thing in the book of Proverbs. He said, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it, out of the heart, is the issues of life. That is from New King James Version. But from NLT, it said that the heart determines your life course, the course of your life. We need to be careful with the eyes of our heart. And how, you need to guard the eyes of your heart and you need to develop the eyes of your heart or we call spiritual eyes. Today, we're going to learn about how to sharpen 
how to develop spiritual eyes to be clearer and sharper, that we can see things that other people cannot see. And if you can develop your spiritual eyes to be sharp and clear, believe me, you can avoid so many mistakes. You can avoid losing unnecessary uh, money unnecessarily. You can avoid even accident. You can make the right choice, connect to the right people, invest with the right people, and save money, save your life, save your family, save your time, because you can discern and understand that this is not right. Don't get involved. This is wrong. Don't go there because it's not right. Don't get involved with these people. God will show you. So let's look at the Bible, how we can develop spiritual eyes. How can we sharpen our spiritual eyes? How many people want to learn today how to do that? How many people want to have sharp and clear spiritual eyes? Raise your hand up. How many people want to be very sensitive and discern spiritually more than before? A lot of time we just use our natural eyes and mental capacity to judge and to discern things, and that is not enough. We need to be sensitive in the realm of the Spirit as well. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 to 3, the first principle, the first way to sharpen your spiritual eyes. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, everyone say, looking unto Jesus. Everyone say, consider Jesus, who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So the first thing you need to do is to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. You need to consider him. You need to get to know Jesus. How do you get to know Jesus? Very simple. Two things. Number one, reading the Bible. Reading the full gospel. You should read the full gospel again and again and again. And number two, you know him. You know, it's one thing, the term, that, that I want to explain the term, learning. Learning is a process. You read the Bible, you listen to the sermon, and you, it's a process of in receiving information and understanding. Learning is a process. But there is another word called revelation. Revelation can happen in one second. You don't need to go through a lot of process, a lot of hours of trying to understand. When the Holy Spirit come and open your eyes and shine the light into your spirit. You read the full gospel, what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. It can be like the light bulb turned on, poop, and you have understanding. Oh, I see. You, I, actually, every Christian should read the Bible that way. When you read, you hook up to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will shine the light. And every sentence you read is almost like, yes, yes. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. I understand. I got it. We should read the Bible that way. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's going to reveal. So we should study about the life of Jesus. We should understand who Jesus is. Get to know him. Keep our eyes on him. You know why? He's the best example for us. He is the author. Author means the beginner. He is the one who... who Bring faith to you. He is the one who initiates faith in you. In order to walk, to have the sharp spiritual eyes, it's about walking by faith because you don't see. He is the author of faith. He will bring you the real faith. You need to get to know him. And then the finisher of faith. It means from the beginning to the end of your life, he is the author and the finisher of your faith. That you can walk by faith and understand the spiritual thing. You read the Bible and see how Jesus walked on earth here. How he responded to the religious leaders. How he cast out demons. How he healed the sick. Study, read the Bible. How he hooked up to the Holy Spirit 
and answer people with words of wisdom. One time, people want to give him a trouble about paying tax to Caesar, to the Roman government. He answered with a word of wisdom. What belonged to Caesar? Give to Caesar. What belonged to God? Give to God. Is that the word of wisdom? Yes. He had the word of knowledge. He walked to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, and then he used the word of knowledge by the Spirit of God and tell her that you don't You are not married right now. Actually, you have many husbands. She was shocked. How do you know? Because I never knew you before. How do you get to know? How do you know that I have many husbands? But she, he did not condemn her. Don't take me wrong. She just he just want to try to help her. God is not a god of condemnation. You can see how Jesus walk on earth. Keep your eyes on him. Any time you face a situation, you hook up with Jesus, and let Jesus help you. And see things from the eyes of Jesus. Respond to the things, to the circumstances, and to the situation the way Jesus would respond. How Jesus gonna say? Definitely, the way Jesus walk on earth. He was a man when he came into the world. He did not even perform a miracle at the beginning until he was filled with the Spirit at the river of Jordan. After that day. The Bible says he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he walked with the power of God. So the same thing we need to look at his example that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to walk with the Spirit all the time, and the Holy Spirit will help us to see things. And that's how Jesus walked. Remember Peter, when people was walking on the water, as long as as long as he keep his eyes on Jesus. He did not sink, but once he start to look at the storm and the wind and the wave, he sank down. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus all the time, the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to keep our eyes on Him, who is our Prince of Peace. He is our healer. He is our strength, our protection. He is our Jehovah Jireh. Our provider, keep our eyes on Him all the time, so that we can have a clear spiritual eyes and see things in the same way He see. This is what I learned. I don't use my eyes to look at myself and look at you, because if I keep my eyes on human, I will be discouraged, because humans have flaws, weaknesses, mistakes. We all make mistake. I make mistake too. I make wrong decision sometimes because I'm human being. So if I keep my eyes on human, I will be discouraged. Instead, I should keep my eyes on Jesus, because if I keep my eyes on Jesus and I don't see my own weakness, I don't focus on my own weakness. And every time I'm gonna do something, or you're gonna do something, or ask you to do something, I pray that they and I can do all things through Him. Who strengthen us? You see, not that we do it ourselves. We need the presence of Jesus. He can strength, strengthen us to be able to handle how to be a good parent, how to be a good husband, a good minister, how to serve people and minister to people. We need Jesus in our life. Keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen. Really want to encourage you as years go by. You need to know Jesus more than last year. Amen. Don't just sing the song, uh, "Jesus, you are anointed man." No, no. We don't just sing the song, but we need to really know Him and keep our eyes on Him. This is our homework as a Christian. Every single year, single month, we need to get to know Jesus more, get closer to Him, keep our eyes on Him all the time. Amen. So that is the first principle. Everyone say, "Keep my eyes on Jesus, know Him, follow His footstep." Amen. Look at the second principle: how to sharpen our spiritual eyes. Proverbs chapter four, twenty to twenty-one. My son, give attention to my words; incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. 
This is the way how God help us. He give us the Bible to tell us the truth, to show us God's way. One part of the Bible, the, I think the book of Proverbs say, if a man's ways please the Lord, he would he even make his enemy become friend with him. How we gonna have our ways being pleased to God? How can we walk in the way that we please God? How can we have a spiritual eyes to see what is the right thing to do? We need to know God's ways. And the Bible is the written book for us to study, to read, to understand. I'm so glad that my daughter go to Bible study on a regular basis to study in detail. Right now, she's studying the book of Judges. I'm so proud of her that she takes serious about studying the Bible. So we should read the Bible. We should keep our eyes on the Word of God, know the Bible. Definitely, there are three things that you can do to know the Word of God. Number one, you read the Bible yourself and may the Holy Spirit teach you when you read the Bible, when you read and study the Bible. I study the Bible every day, many hours a day. Because I love the Word of God. I don't study the Bible just to teach you. I study the Bible for myself so that I can be sensitive spiritually to what God wants. You need to understand that we, grew, grow, we were growing up with a lot of worldly thinking. You watch TV, you read newspaper. Many of us here in this room are first-generation Christians, including me. I'm not a second-generation Christian. So I don't have background of the Bible. I, I was growing up with the Buddhist thinking, the Thai culture, which some of them opposite to the Bible, culture, the Bible ways. So I was surrounded by all this unbiblical or ungodly or unheavenly culture and practices. So my mind is clogged up with a lot of wrong thinking and wrong way of seeing things. You know, because Jum, what if it's in here, what you contained inside here would be like a, a gla- uh, the glasses that make you see things in that way. You understand what I try to say? Whatever in here, whatever you keep inside will make you look at things in that way. It's like a, you have color glasses to look through what you learned from when you were young. If you notice, for example, I noticed that some member who came from very abused family or the, pe- the, the dad is very abusive and very rude to the mom and, and use very abusive words to the kids, when they come to church, this lady will look at other men in the church that way because they have the glasses on their eyes that all men are very abusive and you cannot trust any man because they grow up that way. That is their experience. So the only way to have the different spiritual eyes is to clean up, to renew your mind. The Bible says we need to renew our mind by the Word of God. So one way is to read the Bible yourself and may the Holy Spirit teach you. Two, thank God. God put teachers in the body of Christ. God anoints somebody to be teachers so that you don't have to spend 100 years to understand one subject. A teacher has the spiritual gift to be able to do the cooking for you. They cook the food. How many people like to eat food? I like to eat food. But I don't just go and eat raw meat and raw vegetable. Somebody cook for me. The teacher is like a cook. He will prepare the food for you and so you can eat easily and you can grow faster. So you need both the teacher in the body of Christ and you need to read the Bible yourself. And as you... Receive the word of God. Get the truth in and practice. Everyone say, do the word. You will never know the word. You will never understand the ways of God and have a spiritual eyes clear until you practice what you learn. You practice what you learn. And once you practice what you learn, it's like, okay, I understand now. It happened to me. I remember when I was a new believer. Um, only first year, new believer. I went to a Baptist church. 
and they taught me about giving 10%. At that time, my 10% was equal to Pastor Da's salary in the bank. She was uh, uh, working as a cashier of the bank, and I tried to use reason in my heart. Why do I give 10% to God? It's equal to my wife's salary. Because I was a doctor, I can get more money for my clinic. Then I should not give and then just get her out of the job and just stay home and keep that money for her. Why she has to suffer to go out work, make money that I can give to God anyway, 10%. I was trying to argue in my head. But I decided I'm going to be a full Christian. I don't want to be a fakey Christian. I don't want to be just nominal Christian. I want to be a real Christian. So I decided to give 10%. Boom, my clinic, the business go up three or four times. The income came in. Like suddenly people just come to see me. Boom, 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 boom. And they say, oh, wow, it's real. The Bible never lies. When you give 10%, God meets your need. God performed financial miracle for you. And the same thing, I studied about casting out demons about in year 2004. I began to understand about casting out demons. And God said, okay, you start to cast out demons in the camp this year. And I practiced. I began to cast out demons the first time in my life in the camp of year 2004. And it happened. Then it becomes so real. After that, I have more experience, more and more experiences about demonic activities. So the Bible becomes so real. And now my spiritual eye can see when I look at the people, oh, this symptom is demonic. I may not say it though, but I know this is demonic. When I lay hand on people, I can tell this is demonic. This is the flesh. Because I practice what I learn from the Bible. Amen? Amen. I just practiced what I learned last Saturday. In, I prepared a teaching, how I can get favor from God. And after I studied the Bible, God said, you get favor from God by not, think, not putting pressure on people. Financially, anything. Don't put pressure on people. And God tests me right away whether I'm going to obey what I... I'm, this is... The teaching I'm going to teach in the future in detail. I'm, I don't go into detail today. I need, to put, I need to be the doer of the Word of God. Two Saturdays ago, we went to a dim sum restaurant. I walked in, packed. We have to stand there maybe at least 30, 40 minutes. And I looked at the head of the, uh, not the usher, I'm sorry. The head of the server. <laughs> I call usher. The head of the server. I looked at him. This man, I operate on him two, three years ago. Now he walked fine, no pain. And I did not, did not even send bill to him because I feel have mercy on this man. I went to that restaurant very often. I know him. Who is he? So after I get the bill from insurance, I did not send bill to him. I just cut off all the deductible. I help him not to pay more. So I walk in. The first reaction in my heart, um, maybe I should go and shake hand with him and say, I'm here, uh, can you give me special favor, special treatment? You see, I give you special treatment. I did not send bill to you. You know, I, I have that in my mind, like, oh, maybe I should do that. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit say, are you going to practice what you, do? you write the lesson? Don't put pressure on people. So I said, okay, I need to put this into practice. So I was standing in the corner and didn't do anything, just stand there and pray, God, prove to me that it's going to work. That if I don't put pressure on people, the spiritual eyes, you can, you, because you know the word, you walk in the way of God. Your spiritual eyes are clearer that don't do that. I was standing there, just keep praying. We're all hungry. <laughs> so many people in front of us. And by God's grace, he did not see us at all. He just so busy, so busy with uh, um, Valentine Dim Sum Day. For, uh, it's the 15. And suddenly he turned his eye to look at me. He pointed finger to me. And the first sentence he said, what is your number? 
I say 30. And I just keep quiet. Within one second. Come here. <laughs> Sit there. Praise God. <laughs> the favor of God. Because I did not put pressure on him. Amen. We need to practice what you read in the Bible. If you want to have a clear spiritual eye, you need to clean up your mind first with the word of God. Because your mind can be so filled with full of filthy things that cause you to see through that naked, uh, the, the dirty filter in a different way. Clean it up, see things from God's perspective, from the scriptural perspective. Amen? Amen. I should stop here. So, today we learn two principles. Next time we're going to learn two more. And I'm going to give you some example. Today we learn, number one, spiritual eyes are real. Number two, we need to be the kind of Christian that look at things with more sensitive spiritual eyes or the eyes of the heart. Don't depend on your natural eyes only. Don't just look at things with your natural eyes. But ask God to show you to see deeper than what you see with your natural eyes. He is a God of wisdom. He's a God of revelation. He's going to show you what to do, what's going on. Amen? Amen. And you develop it by, number one, getting to know Jesus, keeping your eyes on Jesus. Read the full gospel again and again. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you who Jesus is, how he walked on earth. Get close to Jesus and let him lead you. Not only that, you should be the people who are really hungry for the Word of God. Discipline yourself to read the Bible every day. Have a life of discipline to listen to the sermon every single day. Instead of sitting in the car, listening to bad news about politics and about economy, why don't you just put in MP3, listening to the Word of God. When you are cooking, instead of listen to the, all the bad news in the TV or listen to some kind of program in the TV that full of junk and filthy things, you just turn on the teaching. While you are uh, doing the yard work, put your iPod on, listening to the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you and teach you my dear brother and sister, the more you know the Word, the better your life is going to be. You're going to be stronger in the physical, in the mind, and in the spirit. That's why the Apostle John say, I pray that you will, your soul will be prosperous. Your soul shall prosper. And then your physical body is going to be prosperous. And then your money is going to be prosperous. It starts from the soul. If your soul is strong, everything else will come. You're going to be healthier. Mentally, physically, financially, family, everything. How? You need to feed your soul so that your soul can have a clear spiritual eyes to see things the, way, the same way God thinks. He gives us this book. He gives us the teacher in the body of Christ. He sends you to this church to be the, with the pastor who is a teacher of the Word of God. Take advantage of it. Listen. Don't waste your time. Amen. Get all the teaching. Get your hard drive. Come to the CD table. Download all the sermon. Listen one series at a time. Just get serious about the Word of God. And don't listen to one sermon one time. Listen three times. Sometimes, first time, you get 20%. Second time, you get another 30%. Even I myself, sometimes I went out to the mission and I preached the same message that I preached here. When I read the sermon, the second time, the third time, to preach the second time, it's like, ooh, it's clearer more. I, yesterday, I was teaching the Timothy class, yesterday here. And I was teaching about how to increase the presence of God. My teaching this year, much better than last year. You know Why? Because as time goes by, 
I, the word of God become more and more, more revelation to me, more clear to me. I grow in the word. I grow from precept upon precept upon precept. And as I grow, my spiritual eyes become clearer about how to walk on this earth, how to live victoriously in this, in this world. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, that today we learn how to develop, how to make our spiritual eyes clear and sharp, and we can have a victorious life on earth here. Father, help your children in this house to put this teaching into practice, Lord, that they will read the full gospel. They will get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, help them to be the people of the word, hungry for the word of God, reading the Bible, listening to the good anointed teaching. Because we believe, Lord, to have the spiritual eyes clear, we need to walk by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of Christ, the anointed word that was teaching by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, let us become the people that have a clear spiritual eyes like Jesus, like Elisha, like the Apostle Paul, like Joseph, King David, Timothy, all these people in the Bible, Lord, that they can see things that other people could not see. Lord, train us to be spiritual people, Lord. Help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Today, the Lord spoke to me one thing. I'd like to specifically pray for a group of people. Let me read the Bible quickly before I pray. In Acts chapter 2, actually, let me start from Luke chapter 24. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. God say, as a believer, we need to be filled with the power of God from heaven. This is a command of Jesus Christ. It's not an option. Christians need to be filled with the power of God. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, But you sh shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and all Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Today I would like to pray, and other pastor too, Pastor Cesar, uh, Mary Jo Neal, Pastor Araj, Pastor Sam, we pray for brothers and sisters who are born-again Christians but have never been filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. I'm not going to pray this in the closed room. We don't put you in the closed room to pray for you. I'm going to pray in public because this church is not a chain of the Holy Spirit. Right. Amen? Amen? We are not a chain of the Holy Spirit. So please honor people who want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask you to pray with us, and we're going to ask you to pray with us if you want to be prayed for, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongue. Could you please come out here and we pray, Pastor, could you please come up to help me? If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit or you're not sure, we pray for you.
Okay. You never been filled with the Holy Spirit, and receive by faith. Receive by faith. If you need to talk, please don't talk in this room. You talk outside to honor the Holy Spirit. Uh, let me lead them to pray first, a uh, brother and sister. Don't don't do it yet. Let them come out first, so that we can pray at the same time. If you never speak in tongue, never been filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to give you advice before we lay hand on you. Jesus, you never been filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to be prayed for, look at me. Listen to me. You receive from God by faith. It's about faith. It's a heart issue. It's not the brain issue. You don't try to analyze it. This is spiritual thing. You cannot analyze it. You need to yield and receive by faith. God say, if you want to receive something good from Him, you need to ask. So I'm going to lead you to pray and ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. You ask. Everyone say it's the heart. Asking. Number three, you need to yield and cooperate with God. God gives us free will. He will never force you to do anything. So you need to cooperate. When we pray for you, you receive by faith. Open up to receive. And then, when we say, "Open your mouth and speak," you just do it, even though you don't understand. You need to cooperate. Okay? Don't resist God. Don't try to analyze. It's by faith. Receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Okay. Don't look at the pastor. Look up to God and yield to God. God may shake you, make you cry. It doesn't matter. You yield to God. Pray with me right now, Father in heaven. I come to you this morning with a humble heart. I obey you, Lord. The command of Jesus is to receive power from on high. Pour your Holy Spirit upon me. I open my heart and receive by faith. I am your disciple. I want to walk in obedience. I cannot serve you by my own strength. I need the Holy Spirit. Fill me, Lord. <laughs> right now, I ask you, and you never lie. You say you give me the Holy Spirit, and you shall do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, gonna come and pray for you. Lay hand on you. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to this place. Welcome to the Holy One. Thank you so much for listening to this message, and I believe that you will be a doer of the Word of God. Remember this. If you obey what God say, you shall be blessed, and God will use you mightily. And I will meet you in the next message. God bless you indeed.